Hi, and welcome to the Athlete to Alumni webinar. This series will cover all things related to transitioning from the student athlete to the alumni role and teach you what you can do to help guide this transition before you even graduate. Each week, we'll cover a specific career industry to connect you with alumni who have had successful transitions themselves and allow them to give you advice on what you will need to prepare for. I'm Megan Berezzi, and I'll be the host for this series. This episode will cover professional athletics, and joining me today for the discussion are two former Maryland football players, Kevin Dorsey and Josh Woods. Welcome guys, how are you guys doing? I'm good, thanks for having us. Good, 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 happy to be here. Awesome, so this is broken down into three different segments. So our first segment, we like to focus on your specific story. So we know that each athlete's transition out of college and into their life after college is very different, obviously playing um, you know, in the NFL, it's even more different for you guys. So tell us, what has your life been like after Maryland? Um, do you want to kick it off or doesn't matter? You can go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, it's, it's been amazing. Um, I can say, you know, leaving, being able to have the opportunity to play professionally for a few years was great. And then um, afterwards, ended up coaching over at Landon in Bethesda for a little bit. And um, I kind of found that as my, I guess, self-discovery. So it gave me time not only to coach, but then, you know, kind of on my off time to figure out other things that I wanted to do, whether I wanted to, you know, go into real estate do some things in the financial sector. Um, I ended up going towards law enforcement, which is something I wanted to do it um, in the beginning. So I um, ended up uh, applying and getting a job with the FBI, and I've been here for roughly four years now. Um, since I left Maryland, uh, a lot's, lot's transpired. Um, I left Maryland, you know, not knowing if I was ever going to play again, because. Uh, <clears throat> my my career at Maryland ended on an injury, uh, but, you know, I was fortunate enough to make it um, into the NFL and play professionally with the Chicago Bears um, going into year four now. Um, and the transition has, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Um, but for the most part, um, it's all a blessing. You know, I've been trying to figure out what it is I like to do. And, you know, in the off season, because we got a huge chunk of time. So I've been you know, setting up <clears throat> a couple of different things, getting into real estate. Um, I'm in the process of uh, launching a clothing line as well as a nonprofit for youth in uh, the inner city. So it's just been, a, it's been a lot, you know, but um, I've been fortunate enough to, you know, be able to live out my dream after, uh, after school. Awesome. Well, thank you both for sharing. It's really exciting to hear that, you know, you have so much more going on, obviously, like I said, being in the NFL is a huge accomplishment and having played for you, Kevin, but it's nice to hear that there's different things. I'm definitely excited to get into that a little bit more as we go through this, but just to kick us off, what is one accomplishment outside of playing professionally that you both have made um, since graduation? Um, I could say for me, it's um, my current job. It's, it's been amazing. It's a great opportunity. Um, just a freedom, the flexibility. I'm currently located down in Miami, transitioning back to the DMV area. Uh, so obviously you can move around. Um, the best thing is they pay for it. Uh, so that's that's beautiful. Um, you can work different violations. You kind of choose what you want to do over time. You can kind of tailor the career to you. So you're not stuck in a particular place or a particular segment at any point or sector. Uh, so you can kind of adapt the job to you. And that's one of the better parts about it. But um, it's, it's great to be a part of it. Um, we do good work and um, obviously trying to make things better for the current environments and everything that we see, um, you know, in the news now. Uh, I would say my biggest accomplishment um, would be um, closing on my house um, after uh, my first year in the league and, you know, being able to move my, par my parents and my sister down here um, out of harm's way, you know, because uh, living situation wasn't the best. So it's been great to kind of see <clears throat> my parents, you know, uh, come into their own after retirement, and, you know, figure out what it is they like to do. My mom's been writing, my dad's been, you know, doing woodwork and stuff. My sister's in college. So it's been really cool to spend, you know, a lot of time with them and, you know, be able to do this for them. It's, it's all been a blessing. You know, I, I felt like that was the first thing I needed to do with this money, you know, was get my family, you know, safe, so. That's awesome. Definitely two, you know, great accomplishments. So sort of on the flip end of that, um, and I know that you both have suffered from injuries throughout your career, but, um, you know, obviously going through injury and, and being an athlete is a huge, um, you know, sort of challenge for you. But 
What about outside of, you know, thinking about athletics? Um, what's a, one of the biggest challenges that you faced after Maryland and how did you overcome it? Um, I would say this is something that I didn't do well. And uh, it's part of the reason why I'm here now. Um, I didn't reach out and I didn't meet and mingle as much as I should have. Um, and that's one thing, you know, of course, I mean, Josh understands it. KG understands it. You understand it. It's one of those things, you know, college athletes, you know, sometimes you don't have as much time as maybe uh, a normal student. But just being able to reach out to ask questions to different people in different places. Um, obviously, you don't need to have a concrete idea of exactly what you want to do or where you want to go. Just have some idea to some degree um, and just start, you know, just picking and choosing, just sample a little bit and um, just figure out what's best for you. Because uh, I can say I had a degree in economics right now. I'm, I'm working in law enforcement. So it doesn't it doesn't always coincide exactly, you know, what your degree and exactly what you're going to do in the world. So just been out, just been going out there and taking opportunities, internships, different things. Um, that's something I wish I'd done a little more. And I think would have helped the uh, transition and made it a little smoother. Um, hmm. I would say just learning how to adult, honestly. <laughs> that's huge. <laughs> no, because, <laughs> no, that is, that's because, huge. Um, I mean, it, it's different. You know, I feel like college kind of has you in this bubble, mm -hmm. you know, um, where as many decisions as you think you're making, you know, like it could only go like one of two ways, you know, like then you step out into the real world and it's kind of like, oh, I got to take care of this, 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 you know, like it's it's just <laughs> a lot. So I think the hardest part was kind of just, and you know, and then managing that with, you know, like I said, I'm living out my dream. So it's kind of like, you know, having this, this, this dual responsibility. Um, I think the hardest part was just, you know, kind of settling down, figuring out what it was that I really wanted to do, prioritize all my things, you know, and just um, not stress so much, you know, cause you know, you want you, everybody, everything's so tense once you get out of college, like, what am I going to do? What's this? What's that? You don't know up from down. So left from right. So uh, that's probably the biggest thing for me. I just had to like calm down and really prioritize and, you know, figure out what it was I wanted to do outside of ball. I think that's important for, for any athlete. Obviously, you are lucky enough to still be playing, but I know that throughout this series, we've heard almost everybody say that, like there's so much pressure on you afterwards to sort of figure out what you're doing, but understanding that everybody's going through that and to just kind of take it one piece at a time. So talking a little bit about um, the social transitions and, and what that's like. So obviously, you know, when you're playing professionally, you're still in that team type, type of dynamic. Um, but an added social piece for that is how often and, and quickly not only you, but those around you have to move. So how did you both handle um, maintaining relationships and also building new ones, whether Josh for you while you're currently still playing or Kevin even after athletics? Um, well, a little bit while I was playing and then even after is just, you know, constantly reaching out to folks and just trying to keep in contact. Um, especially with, you know, a lot of the guys you play with, um, even, you know, KG, um, obviously I didn't play with KG and KG didn't play with me, uh, but KG has been a great mentor for a lot of us, you know, coming through Maryland. Uh, so just mm -hmm. constantly keeping those relationships and reaching out to people um, just as much as you can. Um, Cause I mean, I, we, at this point we have guys um, who I play with who, you know, work in the dairy industry, some work for Amazon, you know, some work in real estate, some work in, you know, uh, law enforcement, they're kind of scattered. And it's uh, obviously it's a little harder to keep in contact with all those people as they start to go out and, and like Josh said, you know, just start adulting because it's, it's, it's not easy. And it's really hard, especially with the houses, kids and all types of things in the mix. Uh, it does get hard, but at those relationships, that camaraderie, that's probably the most important <laughs> thing. Um, Cause you know, regardless at some point, that's what you miss from the game. Um, trying to keep that camaraderie, especially on the outside. Um, I know Josh still, he has it right now. And those, those are his boys for life. And they always will be there. So, you know, when you start to transition, that's the, kind of the thing you look for. And um, it's, it's pivotal to keep those relationships up. Um, I would say uh, it's been pretty easy for me to kind of uh, maintain relationships with people right now because you know in a way kind of everybody wants a piece right but mm -hmm. at the same time like I have to dedicate so much time that, like I have to main, maintain my schedule you know so it's hard to fit you know everybody into that schedule and my closest friends under I've probably talked to my closest friends the least you know because they understand they're like yo mm -hmm. like 
do your thing when you, when you got time hit us up, you know, like, um, but the hardest part, I guess, has been like deciphering, you know, real relationships from fake relationships, you know, and seeing, you know, who has a hidden agenda or whatever, like, cause all that stuff's real, you know? <clears throat> so, but I mean, it's not, I'm not even saying, saying it from an aspect of me being an athlete, like just in general, you know, like anybody could be victim to, you know, a fake relationship or whatever. So it's just been hard kind of deciphering because you meet so many people um, figuring out who's really, you know, for you or the best connections to make or whatnot. So I think that was, that's kind of been the hardest part, just like, because some of those relationships were ones that I valued, you know, that I had to kind of say goodbye to because it just wasn't mutually beneficial. So if you can, Josh, can you talk just a little bit more about that, maybe for somebody who is thinking about playing professionally or whether they're just trying to manage relationships themselves, like how do you decipher the difference between somebody who might have a hidden agenda or, you know, how do you keep yourself sane through that process? Um, with me, I had to get comfortable with saying the word no. Um, it's not something that, you know, me being a generous person, I have a big heart. Like I want to help if I have the means I'm going to, it's what my mom always taught me. But, you know, some people, uh, they abuse that. They take your kindness for weakness, you mm -hmm. know, and they, and it gets to the point where I tell people all the time, like rookie, uh, I got, I, one of my rookies in Chicago, he's like the best kid ever. You know, he always, he's always asking questions. Like he always just, he just wants to know. And he's like, bro, like, how do I, you know, how do I figure this out? And I'm like, bro, tell them no. Tell them no one time and see how they act. See how they react. Because you could do something for somebody a million times. And whether they say thank you or not, whatever, like, if you tell them no one time, they'll always hold that time against you. And remember, if they, you know, if they really aren't there for you or they understand, like, people don't understand that, like, this money runs out. It's not like, I, I haven't found, like, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Like, yes, I do very well for myself, but at the end of the day, like, it's not, like, it's not the numbers that you see in the news. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's different. The business side is really different and people don't understand that. So um, I, I just had to figure out how to say no to people and be comfortable with it. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think that that, that can definitely be really helpful. And I Love that we have you both here and you're kind of in two different places because it helps give a, a full perspective on, on what this is all like. So Kevin, the next question is for you. So talk to us a little bit more about your transition out of athletics. Um, what was it like to hang up your cleats and then how did you build your career after athletics? Um, it was hard. That's the easiest way to say it. It's um, quite possibly one of the hardest things I had to do in my life um, just because you miss that camaraderie with your guys and you don't understand how important it is to sometimes when you step away from it. Um, just from out there, from training, working out the actual games itself, you miss that, I mean, bad. And it's, it's one of those things you're also going from the pinnacle. I mean, you're, you're at the top of your game. You made it to that point. You played, you've had that success. And now, you know, it's almost as if reality sets in or reality that uh, none of us really want to set in. Um, and I remember when I first got to Green Bay, um, our player development, he told us, you know, you got three guarantees in your life, especially when it comes to this game. You sign a bonus, you're going to get injured, and at some point they're going to ask you to leave. And he said, you know, that's that last piece is sometimes, depending on how long you play or how much success you have, sometimes we forget that last piece. And um, it was it was good that, I, honestly, my wife has been my, my rock through all of it, just because she was the one that, times when I didn't want to ask questions or I didn't want to volunteer or I didn't want to put myself out there. Um, she was the one that pushed me forward and it was, it was a blessing. I think the very first NFL PA meeting I went to, she actually made me go. And the first person I run into is KG. Uh, so it, it, things started to come full circle and it's, it's not a, it's not an easy thing. Cause like I said, you're, you're, you're coming from the top. Um, and now you kind of got to start all over again, maybe in a new place, a new sector, a new job, whatever, whatever it is. But the biggest thing is to remember those same fundamentals that got you to that pinnacle in the first place. You know, that grind, you know, the, the time that you put in for training, working out, film study, you can apply that to another place. You just got to tweak it a little bit and you can still have those same, that same achievement somewhere else. You know, you just got to slightly adjust your mind. Um, and, you know, you just sometimes even your spirit, you just got to shift just a little bit to one side 
and things are things will work out. And the biggest thing, you know, keeping those proper relationships around you, um, knowing the real ones from the fake ones, you know, obviously, I mean, KG has been amazing to me. I, I still ask some things, you know, and even now trying to get back in to make sure I'm reaching out to folks. Um, it's, it's important to keep those relationships. Awesome. Thank you. So Josh, this one's for you. Um, thinking, uh, I know you, you mentioned a little bit before about um, how you are involved in multiple things, trying to get into real estate, clothing line, all that type of stuff. So how do you find a balance um, between the demands of playing, but then also not only these extra you know, streams of income and things like that, but also what you like to do and kind of allow yourself to have that work-life balance? Um, I just kind of, I mean, the schedule when in season is pretty hectic. Like they're like they're there's nothing above ball, you know. And then in off season, like if I got to work out the next day, then that's that, you know. Um, and it's cool because I'm kind of just as much as I like to go out and do things and whatnot. Like sitting in the house and watching the movie is perfectly okay with me, <laughs> right? So um, on days where I have you know, business to handle for football because, you know, football trumps all. Can't do any of it without football, right? So um, those days, those are those are my movie days. Those are my, I'm, okay, I'm on the couch, I'm chilling for the night, like I'll cook something, order something and whatever. Have friends come over, but like, y'all gotta go by 10 because I gotta go to bed, you know, that type of deal. But um, in the off season, it's so much time that, I kind of got to figure out what to do with myself. You know, like you, you, you feel almost worthless because nobody like for like three, four months, nobody's checking on you. Nobody's calling you. Like it's a dead period. But I mean, you working out, that's only to stay sane, you know, cause I feel, I feel like I have it. I'm, I'm worthless if I don't work out. And then other than that, like it's the rest of the day. Like what, what are we, I feel like Phineas and Ferb every day. Like, what are we going to do today? You know? So I had to start figuring out what it was that I wanted to do. Um, and so during the season, I have, you know, a team, uh, a group of individuals around me that, you know, work together on different things, but off season, like I kind of, I kind of like the workload because it gives me something to do. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So we're going to roll into segment two here now. So the first segment was, um, about your personal story and then segment two is on, is called their story. So thinking about more of the student athletes now and, and what they could be doing for themselves. Um, so being an athlete yourself or being an alumni yourself now, um, what are the things that student athletes need to know to make their own transition smooth, whether it's going to play in the league or maybe they want to, but don't get fully there or just go straight into a career? Um, I would say, you know, if you if you have the opportunity, take it. Um, the, the league is it's amazing. It's a wonderful place to be. Um, obviously, you, you had to work your, your butt off to get there. Um, we understand in some cases we're lucky and we're blessed too. Um, so if you have the opportunity to take it, it's an amazing place to be. Um, it's a great environment. Um, but then also just still focus on the little things that you may want to do outside of that. You know, like he, Josh said before, you know, being interested in real estate or even a clothing line, you know, start putting little nuggets in those in those pots too. Um, and you can do that while you're in college. So, you know, it's it's not, you may not have as much freedom far as the off season in school, um, but, you know, just try to, if there's certain events, networking events, just try to go to them if you can. And if you can't stay the entire time, you know, just go 30 minutes because, you know, 30 minutes can literally change your life. Uh, so that's, that's, I mean, that's essentially what I would do if I could, you know, go back. I don't know how many years at this point, but uh, if I can go back a little bit. Um, I guess I would say, you know, just enjoy the process. Yeah. So the athlete that wants to chase the dream, like, if you have the opportunity, like you said, just just take it. But like, and I mean, take it serious. Give it your all, but don't stress about it. Yeah. Don't stress. Like the chips are gonna fall where they like. Where they're gonna fall, however they fall. You know, you can't control it. All you can do is do your part, work hard. You know, um, stay out of trouble. And um, if it happens for you, it happens for you. Like, thank God, because that's the only person that did it. You know, he met you halfway. There's nothing that I did that was different than, you know, in terms of working out anything that was different from the next guy, you know, or not, no spectacular play like that I made, or I didn't run way faster than anybody else. You know, there was just, I trained hard. I did my part and, you know, it just happened for me that way. When the opportunity came, I was there for it. 
Mm -hmm. I was ready for it, you know? Um, so that's what I, I, I would just have, just have fun, enjoy the process, no matter whatever your process is, whether you're, you know, they're sending you to Flo Pensacola, Florida to go train, or, you know, you're going to job fairs, just enjoy it. Don't stress about it. Like it's, it's really like out of your control, you know, just be ready for the opportunity when it, when it's, when it's there, when they call your name, you better be ready. Yep. That's true. So obviously you both have been out of school for a couple of years now, and I'm working the student athlete development office, which wasn't even established yet while you guys were here. Um, but what, if any uh, resources did you use at Maryland while being an athlete, whether it was, you know, university connections, faculty, the career center, and if you didn't or didn't take as much advantage as you wanted to, what would you recommend that students do uh, now? Um, I kind of use the, uh, the M club. So sometimes when we would uh, have events, I would try to get over there. And plus it was, it was convenient because it was right there, uh, connected right off of Gossett. Um, so I would just go there and just try to meet people and just kind of pick their brain and, you know, try to get an idea of what I may want to do. Um, but it's that's probably as far as I went. Um, I mean, so even this now, is, it's, it's amazing. And it would be, it'd be, it'd be great if you know, we could have had this a while back, but. Um, yeah, I, I can say during the time I was a little more focused on just playing ball. Um, I wasn't sure if the opportunity would happen. I would just kind of just put my head down and say, Hey, if it happens, it happens. If not, I'll, I'll be ready for whatever the next phase is. And I'll just give it my all. Um, but I would say the M, M club was probably about the extent. I just, I just use study hall. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being honest. <laughs> I mean, I would go to the library every now and then, but no, don't get me wrong. Like, I was always in study hall. Like I was in there whenever I had to be plus some. Um, I had a really good relationship with most of the academic counselors back there. Um, the tutors, I, I would sign up for tutoring. Like, I would I would really use study hall, but like anything out of, outside of gossip, fat chance, fat chance. I, I don't know. Like I, I was going home, you know, if I couldn't figure it out at gossip, I'd, you know, I'd give it an hour at home and you know how that goes but but um honestly I, I do wish I um took more advantage of the resources available uh in college because you know the courses that you know gen ed courses whatever like you don't you don't learn everything that you're supposed to there are you know a lot of resources out here that not even just academically just life skills you know that um were available while I was there that you know, I just would have been ahead of the curve rather than behind the eight ball, you know, and um, it could and it could have been worse, you know, so I, I just wish that I had done that. But too late now, you know, that would be my advice for you if you're still in that situation, you know, it's all good. But um, I definitely I definitely think that I, I like and I thank the academic counselors to this day for what they you know, what they did for me when I was there because I was struggling for a little bit. Yeah, we've talked to um, a few different people throughout the series who say like, and, and it's true, honestly, for anyone and anything, even if you're in your career, but how often like you have the chance to go and do some sort of networking night or something like that. And you're just like, oh, I'm going to stay home, play the game, take a nap, like whatever. But how those little things that you can do and opportunities that you kind of pass up while you're there can really add up to, you know, set you up for your life after college. Absolutely. So um, we have, you both kind of touched on this a little bit, but we have obviously a lot of students who um, are interested in playing professionally and, and want to pursue that, whether it's football or any other sport. So what specific advice could you give those students? Um, I'm gonna have to piggyback off of Josh here. Um, enjoy the process. And, you know, if you're gonna do it, give it everything you've got. Um, and, you know, things don't necessarily work out exactly how you pictured it, it's okay. It, and it's it's completely okay you know just dig your feet in find your new sector or find your new place you know if you're deciding that you wanted to move on and then do the same thing enjoy that next process and just put your head down and just grind um because the only thing that's going to come from hard work is results at some point um and that's not always the results that we may want sometimes in life but there's still results um so you're going to get in you're going to get out you know to some degree what you put in um I mean, like you said, uh, I, I kind of already touched on it, but just enjoying in every part of it, you know, everybody that you meet along the way, um, just being a genuine person, you know, 
um, and just I don't know. It's 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 my my situation was so crazy. It was so it, like it. I I, know, I just didn't worry about it. Like every time somebody would ask me about it, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's, it'll be fine. You know, like where they where they going to draft me? I don't know. It's going to happen. You know, and I ended up not getting drafted, but um, it still wasn't the end of the world. I didn't think it was the end of the world. You know, I got one shot and I made the most out of it. So um, that's all you need. You know, don't let anybody tell you no, because you like everybody's going to tell you no along the way or you can't, you know, and um, it's 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 not about them. It's about you. Like I said, you control it, you know. Um, so definitely just enjoy the ride. Um, and you never know who knows who also. So like like Kevin was yeah. saying, <laughs> keep those relationships yeah. as, as kosher as possible, you know, because like really, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I was working with this one trainer um, when I left when I left Maryland initially and I didn't finish my training session with him, but we left on a great note. Like, you know, I had a great time there. Like even went back later um, and three scouts called him, you know, afterwards and, you know, told him about my pro day and, you know, he had nothing but great things to say about it. Let him tell it. And then, you know, I ended up talking to one of the scouts afterwards and, you know, he just showered me with compliments, like not something that I'm, I'm looking for, but it, I'm sure it definitely helped, you yeah. know, and you just never know who knows who, like, because the, the way the football world is tied is so small that everybody knows somebody, you know? So I would just say, be the best person you can be, honestly. Mm -hmm. We have a, a, our whole next segment is going to be on staying connected and, and networking and stuff like that. So we'll get into that. But I know that everyone who I've talked to on this has said like to take advantage of exactly like opportunities like that and to just, you know, network and talk to anybody who you can. But before we jump to that part, just want to kind of circle back and, and obviously we know that that fact that 2% of, um, you know, collegiate student athletes make it to the NFL. So a good chunk of students even who may want to go and play professionally or do whatever might not have the opportunity to, and, and may not be one of the lucky few like you too. So um, for Josh, how do you identify yourself outside of athletics? And do you have, um, you know, interest in, in, obviously you have these few things working for you, but, you know, idea of what your life would be like, um, you know, after athletics and, and kind of give some encouragement for students who may have to pivot after um, they graduate and, and kind of not get the chance to do what you're doing. Um, outside of athletics, um, I would, I would identify myself as you know just somebody trying to make a difference you know whatever that difference is um I just I just want to have a legacy you know um leave something bigger than when I started um so uh that I know that's kind of vague but that's that's because life can go so many ways like that's kind of what I've boiled like I've narrowed it down to like I don't care what my avenue is I just want to be great at it you know, so as long as I'm playing football, I'm going to be great at it, you know, or I'm going to work to be great at it, you know, and like I said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to launch this clothing line and the nonprofit and, you know, I want to get into real estate and, um, you know, I'm starting to get into my investment portfolio things like these are all things that I want to be great at, you know, um, no matter what it is and whatever pops pops, you know, if it, and, and if I don't, at least I know, um, I went out going as hard as I, you know, as hard as I could. Um, so I, I would say just just take that and whatever facet you're interested in, whether it's still ball, not ball, you know, wherever you got to pivot from, um, that's that would be the most important thing. So obviously you have a lot of different interests and in, in, in things like that. So how did you kind of start to identify some of those different passions that you have? I mean, um, you know, feel free to talk more about the nonprofit. Obviously, that's a great space to be in. But, you know, how did you start to figure out some of these things that you were interested in and then, you know, take those steps to, to start to pursue them? Um, well, I've always been taught to give back. Um, so when I thought about how it was, what it was that I wanted to give back to, um, it was where I came from. So inner city um, and, and, you know, Youth in the inner city have such a bad reputation, right? There's such a negative stigma with 
public schools in Baltimore City and all these things that are going on. Um, and it's not the kid's fault, you know? And the only thing that separates me from the next person was somebody gave me an opportunity. Yeah, I worked hard, I cashed in on it, you know? Every chance, you know, every, every time, every stair step, you know, it was a different opportunity, a different challenge. I'm not saying that it was easy, but I was given the opportunity and kids weren't or aren't, you know, there, there are no extracurriculars in school anymore. Kids are getting out at two o'clock. You know, if you want to be real, most parents or most families in those situations are low to middle income, which means they're probably not working the best hours or if anything, they're working all day. So these kids are getting out of school at two o'clock, have nothing to do, idle hands are the devil's work, you know? So I wanna start a, I wanna start something where kids can do whatever it is they wanna do, just give them opportunity, whether it's sports, whether it's STEM, whether it's culinary, whether it's music, whether, well, you know, like a boys and girls club, but just like everything, you know? Um, so that's, that's where that idea comes from. And it's still like a very much so a budding idea, but like that, like you got to dream big, you know? So that's, that's what I want to do. That's how I want to give back. That's awesome. Thank you. You can, you can see the, the passion in your voice and the way that you talk about it. So it's awesome, you know, to think about for some students who might be, have similar passions to kind of keep those, those ideas in mind um, for when they have the chance to do that as well. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and Kevin, for you, how did you find um, your passion for, you know, what you do now and how did you stay encouraged to continue to navigate um, through each step of your career as you've sort of, as you've begun to build your career um, up in these last few years? Um, I'll say originally, this is just something that I wanted to do um, outside of football. Um, I knew at some point, you know, football wouldn't necessarily be there forever. Um, and this is something I wanted to transition to, but I can say, um, that fuel keeps getting reignited over and over. And it's just one of those things at this point, um, I look at it, you know, you see a problem become the solution. And especially in my line of work, um, some of the things, like I said before, that you kind of see around the world at this point that are happening in different places and sectors, my mindset is, okay, well, become the solution. What can I do to leave an impact, leave a legacy that lives beyond me? And I always kind of approach my job at this point, you know, am I, am I doing enough? And I am I making enough changes, not only with, in my work environment, but then the community as well, where is this now a place where 20 years from now, will I want my daughter to work here? Um, and I think that's important. So, you know, just trying to have something that outlives me is important. And I, I don't, you know, care for any, you know, fame or gratification or anything from it. I, I don't want any titles, any plaques. I just want to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And not only for the people who work this, uh, you know, profession, especially at, you know, the federal level, but, you know, for the communities that they affect, I uh, mean, I think it's absolutely important. And, you know, from where we are, at least where I am now, you know, more or less the pinnacle of law enforcement, I think, you know, some of those changes should come from top down. And the only way to kind of make those changes, you got to be in position to make those changes. Um, so that I think that's important. And it's it constantly reignites, you know, different things and different problems as they arise, You're trying to find unique solutions to fix them and trying to have communities and other outside input, you know, kind of help facilitate those decisions along with the conversations. Um, I think it's important. Thank you, that's awesome. Um, so just rolling into our last segment here, um, like I said earlier, this focuses on just staying connected. Um, you know, you've both talked about mentorship within, um, you know, your things, whether Kevin, for you, you know, talking about KG and, and the, you know, the role that different coaches and, and um, other people have had on you. And Josh, obviously, you know, mentorship is huge for the, the nonprofit you want to start. And I'm sure you have connections as well. So talk to us a little bit, um, each of you, about how uh, student athletes became, can stay connected to UMD um, after graduation, whether, again, it's something that you've done yourself or that you would have, like, wished that you did. Uh, do you want to go, Josh? Um, yeah, I can start this. Um, I, <clears throat> I would just say, uh, you know, obviously it, it, it helps stand in contact with your coach, you know, if not all of them, you know, the ones who you've had the best relationship with, like, establish that relationship, you know, that, 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 that could be something that's beneficial for both of you, you know, for the rest of your lives. You know, you never know if you, once you're done playing, if you want to get back into it, you know, um, or um, what I wish I did was, you know, make more connections with, 
you know, like the AD and, you know, just the, the office of, you know, athlete administration, you know, I just wish that I had more connections there because maybe I would want to come back and, you know, coach in Maryland or something, you know, that's just an avenue that you would always want to have open. So I wish I cashed in on that, but I definitely still talk to, you know, I talked to Brawley Evans almost. That's, that's my coach from um, my senior year. I talked to him whenever, you know, he DMs me on tour. He just called me the other day because he was talking to, to um, you know, one of the players. So um, definitely just keep those releases with your coaches. Because once, once you're done playing, you realize how human they are. I mean, I, it's, as hard as it may seem, they, they are human. <laughs> like, I promise. Uh, I would, like, I, this is just piggybacking at this point without the same thing. Stay in contact with those coaches, uh, especially the ones you had those great relationships with. Um, I mean, I, it's crazy enough, I was a receiver, but I found myself hanging around, with, you know, like the lineman's coach and like linebacker's coach. Um, it, it just depends. You know, it's not always going to be necessarily your position coach. But then uh, kind of something to what Josh just said, too, um, another opportunity. I'm not sure if they're still doing it. But when I was there, I actually got an internship at the AD's office my last year. So my last semester, that's why I interned. And that counted for one of my courses. Uh, so, you know, that's still a possibility. I would definitely say for all student athletes, you know, if you can at some point, you know, try to see if you can fit that in your schedule. Just to know, if, like you said, to get a different perspective from another side, um, just to maybe see something, you know, kind of behind the scenes. And for me, it was amazing because um, it was Kelly Merthens, and actually she works for the NFL PA now. Um, Kelly was amazing and she was not easy on me. Not I don't know, <laughs> at she, all. At all. No, I'm glad she, to know I'm not the only one. Yes, she was pretty <laughs> tough. I mean, from God, they had me scheduling out games out to 2022. And I'm like, what, I'm, what are you talking about? So, you know, just, and just seeing a different side that we as players, we don't get to see, especially at the college level, um, budgeting for those things, TV deals, all these things that they're dealing with on their levels you get to see see a little bit of it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be for football. I mean, you can kind of do this for any sport. So I think that's another good avenue. And hopefully they're still doing it. Um, if not, it'd be good to get that started again at some point. But, you know, just keep those contacts, those good friends, those genuine friends, good coaches, you know, keep those people around. Well, we're definitely still doing it. I can give you uh, give you that for you. We have over 20 paid internships within the um, athletic department for student athletes each summer. So. Um, thank you for that shameless plug, because now we can definitely encourage them to do it since, since you both said so. <laughs> um, so just finishing out here, you guys have been absolutely amazing giving, you know, great advice. And again, two different perspectives is always um, great, but even seeing the sim similarities that you both are saying um, throughout this. But as we close out here, could you just give us one final gem, um, whether it's any type of advice that you may have or something you wish you could tell your younger self um, just as, as we close out? Um, I would just say, don't be afraid. Just put yourself out there. You never know, just talking to someone for one second, uh, going to a meeting, going to an event, just put yourself out there um, and just just try. And then they you all know, like, I'm gonna have to piggyback on this again from Josh. Like you, you have to enjoy the process. Um, you never know exactly what life may throw at you. Um, you just take it as it comes and you just keep moving forward. But you know, if you're gonna do something, give everything you got towards it but just don't be afraid to put yourself out there for any place, any opportunity. Um, I hate to be cliche, but I feel like if anything, <laughs> it's time to be cliche. Um, <laughs> no, I would just say, <clears throat> and I mean this like from the bottom of my heart, like believe in yourself, yeah. believe in yourself. Yeah. It goes a long way. Um, there was a point where my collegiate career, I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, my, and my play showed that. You know, the game that I've been playing since I was a little kid. It's the same game. You know, all of a sudden, why did I get bad at it? Because I stopped believing in myself. And the moment I did is when it clicked. And it's been clicking ever since. Yeah. So my advice would be to believe in yourself. Because you can, you can do it. It's, it's all up to you. You know, it's all up to you. So... Awesome. Well, I think that's a, a great way to, to close us out here and on, on an encouraging note for sure as well. It could be you know, applied to people who are still playing right now, even in college. So thank you both for that. So with that, we are going to close out this episode of Athlete to Alumni. Kevin and Josh, thank you guys both so much for joining me. Look forward to um, <laughs> you know being able to share this with the student athletes. I think they're really going to get something out of it. So thank you guys.
No doubt. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. Yep.